Welcome back. Iraq Airways is flying high with its recent achievements. Last year it filled 250,000 seats and it expanded its destination network to Africa, Middle East and Asia. Speaking about the airline's significant milestones in barely two years, Iraq Airways CEO John Brayford revealed the new domestic flight between Ras Al Khaimah and Abu Dhabi, increasing the number of airlines' destinations to 10 routes. This was made possible by their co-chair partnership with Etihad Airways, a first between two UAE flight carriers. The agreement will see Etihad place its EY code on the Rack Airways flight between Ras Al Khaimah and Abu Dhabi, while Rack Airways RT code will be on Etihad Airways' routes. This initially includes flights between Abu Dhabi, London Heathrow, Manchester, Dublin, Bangkok and Geneva, which will offer visitors from these destinations a direct link to Ras Al Khaimah, while providing residents of Ras Al Khaimah and the Northern Emirates more destination choices. We intend to uh, expand the Abu Dhabi to a double daily flight uh, next April and that will give us, I think, a much better proposition for domestic travellers, many of whom will choose to go for the day, but of course some of them will choose to stay overnight or, as we understand it, a number of people, quite a significant number of people from here actually work in Abu Dhabi, travelling upon a Saturday evening or very early on Sunday morning and travelling back with all the traffic on a Thursday evening after work. The first flight to Abu Dhabi will commence on October the 3rd with a lead-in price of 205 dirhams. Brayford says they are also hoping to launch two more destinations during the early part of 2013 and are looking at expanding their fleet. We'll be leasing a third A320 which will be ready for the summer of next year. So, you know, this is the first um, expansion move since the start of the carrier. We, we started with leased aircraft operated by third parties. Then we went to our own dry leased aircraft, which means we operate with our own crew and under our own operation specifications. And now we're expanding that. A new survey of small business owners conducted by VirtuZone reveals that the economic outlook is positive. The UAE-based company setup operator surveyed 153 startups. 59% of those polled considered the performance of their business better than expected. 60% are already making a profit, while 49% are confident their company's revenue will improve in the next 12 to 18 months. The survey also revealed that the internet, e-commerce and technological advancements are the backbone of entrepreneurship in the UAE. Meanwhile, research shows that the biggest challenges for small businesses include uncertainty about cash flow, unexpected market changes and pressure from larger competitors. Let's now look at the stock indices across the GCC. It was another volatile week in the financial markets last week as the FOMC finally folded and announced QE3. Speculation had been rife that the September 12-13 to 13 meeting was the forum in which Ben Bernanke would finally introduce the measures following several months of inaction. Mm -hmm. To find out how the markets reacted to the announcement, we earlier spoke with Gaurav Kashyap, the head of the DGCX desk at Alpari Middle East. Well, I think it's safe to say that U.S. dollar longs are in a bit of a bother now following the announcement by the FOMC on Thursday. Basically, what the Federal Reserve has decided to do in their announcement is that they will be pumping in about 45 billion U.S. dollars a month into the U.S. economy through the purchase of mortgage-backed securities. Now, this will immediately devalue the dollar. We saw the risk on trade taking uh, U.S. equity markets higher. The Dow and the S&P all gained more than 1.5% uh, following the announcement. And we expect this risk on sentiment to keep the dollar suppressed in the next couple of months of trading. Uh, there are some points which are still unclear. Uh, ben Bernanke, the Fed chairman, announced that this, these programs will be unlimited and they will be uh, indefinite in uh, length, which means that there would need to be a significant improvement in the labor market as well as the U.S. economy. He was not very clear on what he means by an improved labor market as well as what a strong economy means. 
So going forward, any major U.S. data will definitely lead to a lot of fireworks uh, in the U.S. dollar currency coming up. But overall, the U.S. dollar will remain on the back foot against currencies such as the euro and the British pound this week. Uh, gold and the energies, as, w as well as the entire commodity segment, will continue to make gains against the U.S. dollar. This week, we're particularly watching for the 133 level for the euro against the uh, against the US dollar and the pound also probably looking to test around 163 to 165 against the US dollar this week. Uh, it's going to be a big week for the British pound, the Bank of England uh, announcing their meeting minutes on Wednesday and this is going to be expected to be largely supportive for GBP crosses.